Hello friends, welcome to our lecture series on CSR and uh, today I am going to discuss with you the topic of CSR measurement, CSR measurement and uh, impact analysis in global perspective. This is going to be part 3 of our lectures on uh, CSR measurement and impact analysis. And uh, my dear learners in this very lecture, I will be telling you about the global perspective of this entire measurement and impact analysis aspect of CSR. And uh, today's lecture uh, uh, will actually be focusing upon the measurement system with particular emphasis on the GRI that is Global Reporting Initiative. I will be telling you about the GRI initiative, what is there into uh, this uh, specific reporting standard. But before uh, going ahead, let me tell you about the GRI, what is GRI? GRI is basically uh, an initiative, it is a reporting initiative which uh, promotes the use of sustainability reporting as a way for uh, any organization to become more sustainable and uh, contribute to a sustainable global economy. So, as the term itself is indicating that we are here to contribute to a sustainable uh, global economy and the objective is that whatever activities we are into, whatever job we are uh, entrusted with, we are supposed to ensure that we are contributing positively uh, towards the establishment of, an, uh, of a global economy which is sustainable in all aspects. And uh, my dear learners, when we talk about GRI, Global Reporting Initiative, it is regarded as one of the most comprehensive uh, reporting pattern where in uh, any organization which is complying with this, which is reporting according to it, they are supposed to become uh, more sustainable and they are willing to contribute to a sustainable global economy. And uh, how it does, how it is uh, doing so, uh, how come an organization uh, does so by, by the way of GRI initiative that is Global Reporting Initiative, they are doing it by developing sustainability reporting guidelines. GRI is basically doing it by the way of developing sustainability reporting guidelines. They have certain guidelines and uh, in due course of time, I will be telling you at the uh, fag end of this lecture about the journey of GRI, the way it started from the year 1997 until date, uh, the way it has changed its uh, entire modus operandi and the way uh, the reporting is being done. And it is a reflection of nothing but uh, the dynamism which this GRI initiative, GRI is following uh, with regard to uh, developing sustainability reporting guidelines. So, earlier they were there were certain guidelines, now we have certain standards and even within that standard we have area wise uh, the, the details, detailed reporting uh, aspects are uh, being prescribed under GRI. So, GRI is basically uh, uh, an initiative at global level which is uh, talking about reporting. Uh, how to report uh, your uh, how to how to report your csr activities how to become more sustainable towards uh, establishment of a sustainable global economy and uh, they they basically allow organizations to measure their economic environmental social governance impacts and performance earlier when we were talking about sustained development we used to have only one aspect in our mind that sustainable means we are uh, taking care, we are taking cognizance of uh, environmental issues. If there is any environmental degradation or if there is any loss we are causing to the environment or the ecology in which we are uh, living or in which we are operating, then of course, we have to take care of that. We have to ensure that uh, there is uh, less harm on or, or if there is some uh, harm we are causing to the atmosphere, then we need to take care of it. Suppose, for instance, we are talking about uh, the emissions which we are uh, creating uh, or emitting, for that we, we need to have an emission treatment plant or suppose if we are creating, if we are causing some air pollution, then accordingly we have to uh, ensure that how to take care of those SPMs that is suspended particulate matters. So, earlier when we were talking about uh, the, the sustainable uh, development or sustainable economy, we, we were only talking about the uh, environmental aspect, but nowadays when we talk about uh, this uh, entire reporting of sustained development, then of course, as, as far as GRI is concerned, we have to not only look for the environment mental aspect, but also economic, social governance, impacts and performance also. So, even, even the, the, the organization is entrusted with the economic responsibility, they do have their social responsibility, but they are also supposed to take care of the governance aspect that whatever is uh, the the law of land accordingly you have to you have to abide by those regulations you have to take care of those corporate governance aspects and and what impact you are creating as an institution as an organization and of course your performance on all these parameters that is uh, the that is the the basic or you can say broad contours 
uh, the, uh, that is basically the broad dimension of reporting which we are supposed to do uh, as far as uh, GRI reporting is concerned. And, and of course, when you uh, calculate your impact and, and when you measure your performance, you have to formally report on these parameters through a sustainability report. And my dear learners, I would like to remind you again that uh, we are talking about the reporting in global perspective. I am telling you about the CSR measurement and uh, reporting uh, in gl uh, global perspective. Uh, and later on I will be telling you about the Indian perspective also the way uh, the SEBI has given prescribed certain rules and regulations, what are the provisions of Companies Act 2013 with regard to this. I will be telling you a little later, but we have started our discussion with the global uh, scenario, the kind of researches which are being conducted in this very field of impact analysis and measurement of uh, CSR activities and afterwards we have to talk about uh, those standards, those reporting initiatives which are there in front of us. These guidelines are basically developed uh, uh, through extensive uh, stakeholders consultation and discussion. So, after uh, you know detailed deliberation and discussion with the experts from across the world from a, a wide variety of uh, constituency groups it is decided it is it is not like that that you are prescribing it without uh, consulting with all the stakeholders and and when we are consulting those stakeholders they include uh, the civil society they include the business entities the government representatives labor organizations and of course the financial uh, uh, area financial domain also we are looking for so these uh, gri guidelines are basically a well thought uh, uh, kind of uh, initiative they were when they started they were basically a well thought and well deliberated and discussed uh, guidelines which were developed through extensive stakeholders discussion uh, consultation deliberation and and in due course of uh, those discussions lot of uh, lot many modifications uh, also uh, take place and after that they are uh, uh, prescribing those guidelines to the corporate entities which are going to report as per the gri guidelines now, how to understand GRI, uh, uh, how, to, how to take GRI uh, as, a, as a complete reporting initiative? When we look at the entire measurement system uh, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, the parameters, you would find that there are five points uh, for this GRI reporting. Like it, it is just like uh, uh, when we are going to report something, we need to understand what are those broad parameter, um, parameters. It is just like uh, giving your own uh, appraisal, uh, it is just like giving your own perform performance appraisal, filling your own performance appraisal form in which we are finding that these are the broad uh, uh, domains in which we have to report. So, section wise, segment wise reporting is, is uh, uh, being done and uh, for that we need to understand that there are five points into this uh, uh, measurement system under uh, GRI and uh, if we take up those five points, they are basically named as the concept used by the business enterprise, how do you define the definitions, conceptual framework, indicators uh, which are being defined and of course, the, the measures given. So, if we look at those five points, uh, there are certain observations which can be which can be made as a as a learner by, from our side. So, I will be telling you one by one uh, about uh, these important aspects of GRI that is global reporting initiative. So, let us start with the first one that is concept used and uh, when we talk about concept used, we are talking about sustainability reporting. So, how do you define sustainability reporting? First of all, we need to clarify that what is our orientation when we are uh, reporting about sustainability and uh, sustainability of our business enterprise. So, what is my orientation that I need to uh, clarify, that I need to write or, or uh, share with my stakeholders. So, sustainability reporting when we have to define, I would say that it refers to an to any organization's public account of uh, its economic, environmental and social performance in relation to their operations, products and services. Suppose I am a business entity, I am having my own operations, I am producing certain products or there might be a possibility that I am providing a combination of products and services or services only. So, uh, basically sustainability reporting is, is, uh, is my public account of uh, my economic, environmental and social performance. That economically uh, in terms of economic uh, growth or development uh, to what extent uh, I have contributed as an organization, what is my economic contribution and that is basically our success in terms of profitability of your organization, in terms of your 
book profit in terms of your uh, expansion in terms of your net worth in terms of your economic value added that is eva after that we have to look for the environmental aspect of our performance and that uh, to what extent uh, we have caused uh, uh, harm to the environment or or it can be positive also to what extent we have uh, done something positive for the environmental betterment and that is another point uh, of our sustainability reporting and uh, lastly the social performance that uh, the society in which we are living in which we are operating what is the impact what is our performance uh, as an uh, as a as an entity as a business organizations for social uh, betterment or for the social welfare so my dear learners when we are talking about the concept uh, used for this uh, sustainability reporting we need to understand that we are not only going to offer our public account of uh, economic performance or environmental performance but also the social performance uh, and and it need to be in relation to our operations our products or services so it is just like uh, you know giving your your report card presenting your report card that while doing your core operations while doing your uh, business for which you are uh, into the industry uh, what what uh, what impact you have created in terms of economic environmental and social performance and gri basically describes sustainability reporting in uh, the g4 guidelines g4 is the latest one uh, before the standards right now we are having standards but g4 is basically the 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 uh, immediate past one and uh, g4 guidelines are basically describing it as uh, helping organizations to set goals measure performance and manage change in order to make their operations more sustainable so their objective is while while uh, gri is there to prescribe you those reporting standards those guidelines they are also helping us these guidelines are basically helping us in 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 uh, in setting our goals that how to determine your goals Uh, and uh, how to measure your performance even the measurement pattern they are giving that uh, suppose if you are doing something in a specific direction that what is your quantified performance and and that need to be presented before the stakeholders and uh, of course managing change uh, in order to ensure that your operations are more sustainable because at times we are we are unknowingly doing something wrong and and once we realize that yes by making a small change we can uh, we can Uh, make our operations more sustainable so these guidelines are not only prescribing us to uh, prescribing us to report but also they are guiding us how to become how to make your operations more sustainable how to become more systematic to uh, to ensure sustainability so you can you can take it uh, in a positive term that don't take it as a as a formality of a reporting as a as a business enterprise take it as a process that once i go through this process my uh, business operations or or my my core business operations will become more sustainable i, I my business can be more systematic in terms of uh, its uh, economic environmental and social performance so that is what is the the motive behind uh, prescribing such uh, reporting standards and this sustainability report is basically communicate it it basically communicates disclosures on uh, your impact as an organization it can be a positive impact it can be a negative impact on your environment on your society on your economy but whatever it is that need to be reported so sustainability report once you are uh, submitting or 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 disclosing in your annual report you need to be very on, honest into that don't don't uh, make any change into it uh, whatever is the reality you need to report it can be positive or negative so in one year suppose i am negative once i have realized that i am i'm uh, my performance is negative in terms of uh, the the social welfare suppose on economic parameters we are excellent on environmental uh, parameters we are excellent but uh, in case of social welfare aspect or social betterment aspect we are having a negative performance and of course we have a chance to improve and that is what uh, for this sustainability report is there and uh, this reporting is basically there to uh, make organizations more sensible to ensure that they understand what they are doing and 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 once you realize your mistake then of course you you are there you you may uh, uh, take take it positively in a, in a, in a right spirit and you can improvise along with the reporting of your economic environmental and social uh, performance it also presents the the value the core values of an organization and the governance model which you are following as a business entity 
and of course, once they are presenting your core values, your governance model, uh, the link between your strategy and its commitment to a sustainable economy is also presented. So, when we are reading sustainability report of uh, a company, we are finding a, a systematic presentation of the organization's values, its governance model, its link between the, uh, the strategy and its commitment to a sustainable economy. And, and uh, when we uh, have to define sustainability, there is a definition given by uh, the GRI uh, in its own uh, uh, vision statement. They have defined what is sustainability all about. And they are saying that uh, a sustainable global economy uh, where organizations manage their economic, environmental, social and governance performance and impacts responsibly and report transparently. So, last two uh, lines are very important that while reporting uh, your uh, impacts uh, are responsible, you are you whatever impact you are creating that is uh, a responsible impact you are supposed to create and you have to report transparently. So, if my impact is responsible, if my performance is responsible and my reporting is transparent, then of course, I have all the chances to improvise and uh, my organization is going to cause or to create a better impact uh, in terms of the responsible behavior and uh, of course, the transparent reporting is going to increase uh, your credibility in the eyes of the stakeholders. So, my dear learners while, while telling you about this GRI, there are different standards uh, which organizations can uh, follow, but these are basically in certain cases you will, you will find that uh, in most of the countries they are voluntary in nature, there is uh, no mandate. Uh, but uh, of course, once you have decided to be systematic, uh, you have all the chances to improvise. So, if you look at the vision statement uh, of G GRI Global Reporting Initiative, which has been taken from their website with all uh, with due respect to them and we give all credit to uh, the Global Reporting Initiative website from where this uh, vision statement has been taken that a sustainable global economy where organizations are managing their economic, environmental, social and governance performance in such a way that uh, their impact is responsible and reporting is done transparently. So, this is a brief intro about the Global Reporting Initiative. Now, we need to understand after uh, having a brief knowledge of what is GRI, what it talks about, what exactly we mean by sustainability, sustainable reporting when we uh, talk about it in relation to uh, the Global Reporting Initiative. It is time for us to understand what are the recent amendments in Global report Reporting Initiatives. Sustainability reporting standards are now there in place, uh, which, which are basically setting the highest level of transparency for impacts on economy, environmental and people and they move to full adoption stage with effect from January 1, 2023, which is this year only. So, from January 1, 2023 in uh, GRI, we have got the sustainability reporting standards. And they are basically regarded as uh, the set of highest level of uh, uh, transparency for impact on uh, th those three parameters which we have been uh, talking about that is economy, the economic impact, environmental impact and lastly the social impact. So, the recent amendment is the emergence of the prescription of standards and with effect from 1st January to 2023 the universal standards 2021 becomes effective. When I say having said that this has now become effective, it means all GRI reporters, suppose if you are reporting your, uh, your performance, your business performance, your responsibility reporting as per GRI, then you will be required to use these key standards for information published on or after this date. So, whatever information as a, as a business enterprise you are publishing after on or after 1st January 2023, you have to actually report. Uh, uh, in terms of all these key standards which is being prescribed by the GRI that is Global Reporting Initiative. Second point after understanding uh, the, the, the key aspect, second one is conceptual framework. What is the conceptual framework? 
So, if we look at the G4, I will be telling you about what was there into G4, the, what is there into standard, what has changed and, and what is still uh, there uh, in terms of the G4 guidelines. So, there are certain points uh, of G4 guidelines which are still there in practice where even after adoption of standards and there are certain points which have been changed. So, where the change has taken place that I will be telling you because most of the organizations prior to 1-1-2023 they have been reporting as per G4 guideline. So, you may find uh, uh, it to be uh, the latest one that yes, uh, there are certain companies since it has come, it, is, it has been effective with effect from January 1, 2023, then of course, the reporting uh, we, we will be getting only report of few months only or one year only to the max. So, G4 was basically designed for all types of business enterprises or organizations across the globe irrespective of their sector or their size. So, whatever size, uh, whatever uh, magnitude uh, of your business uh, is or in, in, in whichever sector you are working, you have the similar uh, guideline as far as G4 was concerned and it was also supposed to help uh, a business organization to report performance against different codes and norms for sustainability. Suppose if you have certain national codes and norms, they were guiding about that. Suppose if you are a multinational company, you are working in a specific country where there are certain national standards. So, they are basically uh, guiding, they are, they are supposed to help uh, the business organization or business enterprise report according to the national as well as international codes and norms on sustainability. But while doing so, the entire focus of G4 was to help uh, organization produce sustainability report focused on material topics. When I say materiality, we talk about the important aspects. It is just like materiality convention of accounting that while giving your reports, do not report uh, the immaterial things. We have to report whatever is material, whatever is significant. Otherwise, the size of your report may become very bulky, very lengthy and uh, the, the stakeholders may lose their interest in reading the, those bulky reports of which is running into 300, 400 pages because they are basically looking at the parameter wise reporting. And the executive team's understanding and decisions on their material topics should easily be found in G4 based report. You can find there. Under G4, the uh, key focus was on providing information on the issues which are most critical for the business enterprise in order to achieve the sustainability goals and of course, managing their impact on those three parameters which we have discussed about. Taking stakeholders views into account is fundamental to uh, create or develop a proper understanding of your organization's impact and how these relate to your business value. So, GRI basically believes that in the end what is what matters is will results uh, will result in reports that are strategic and focused. So, they are saying that at the end what matters is uh, the reports which you are uh, uh, you know submitting in front of your stakeholders uh, whether they are focused or not. Because if you lose uh, your focus into the reporting, then of course, stakeholders stakeholders may lose their interest in, in understanding what you are doing. So, G4 was basically presented into two separate documents. First one was G4 reporting principles and standard disclosures and we used to call it RPSD as an acronym, reporting principles and standard disclosures. So, in this segment, you have to report your reporting principles, what are the broad principles you have followed and the standard disclosures, there are certain uh, segment wise disclosures which you have to disclose and it contains the reporting principles, standard disclosures and whatever criteria you have applied uh, as a business enterprise for your um, sustainability reporting in order to meet the G4 requirement that also you have to discuss. So, in the first segment of your uh, uh, G4 reporting, uh, the principles and standards uh, disclosures they were basically the they were basically forming the part of your report second one was the implementation manual which is more important and significant the first one is giving you the base the foundation the second one is telling you about the practicality that is g4 implementation manual and it basically contains the detailed guidance on how to understand interpret and implement the concepts in the g4 guidelines and, and this, this uh, content of G4 is made up of reporting principles and standard disclosures. So, implementation manual is basically telling you about the way you have implemented your uh, entire uh, responsible behavior and that is reported transparent, transparently. And after that comes uh, the GRI standards. The GRI standards are basically congruent with GRI uh, G4 because it is basically based on the main content and concept from the guidelines only. 
So, if you feel that uh, G4 is completely replaced, uh, it is wrong. G4 is basically uh, the foundation, it is a basis on the, on the basis of which main content concepts uh, and guidelines are taken. However, they represent an advanced and simplified reporting uh, mechanism as well as they are opening up a new era in the disclosure of uh, sustainability information. So, standards are going to, uh, to provide us uh, a representation of advanced and simplified reporting pattern. Otherwise, the basis is uh, still G4. What GRI does? They are basically allowing any organization as I have told you at the very outset to report uh, your information in a way with, that it covers all uh, significant aspects on those three parameters that is economy, environment and people. And uh, they have to focus on specific topics such as climate change or child labor accordingly they can decide. And if we look at the new structure, the standard aims at restructuring the G4 guidelines, it was not about adding new contents uh, as such and there is a new modular structure as far as standard is concerned. And now the standards are composed of three main universal standards and 33 topic specific standards. I am not uh, going into the details of those standards, I am just giving you a brief uh, idea about what is there into the GRI reporting because uh, th that becomes very lengthy when we talk about those three universal standards and th th 33 topic wise standards. So, Earlier, the, the um, companies were reporting uh, as per the G4 guidelines. Now, they are supposed to uh, report as per, uh, you know, the standards. Now, the last point is what did not change from GRI G4 guidelines? The reporting principles are still a key element of the standards. They have not yet changed. So, whatever was there, reporting principles, what were there in G4 guidelines, the same are there into standards also. The second is the materiality principle. It still uh, holds uh, true that uh, you have to report on significant items and uh, you have to leave the non-significant one. You have to still uh, notify GRI of the use of the standards. You have the content of disclosures mainly remains the same. And uh, if we look at the history of GRI, uh, as far as this uh, basic GRI reporting is concerned, it was founded in Boston, US in 1997 and from that year, that is 1997 till 2022, they started their journey from a, a small, uh, you know, initiative that is global reporting initiatives and now the journey is, has reached to a level of uh, formulating a standard and prescribing it. So, with this I am ending today's lecture of mine. I hope you must have understood the broad contours of GRI reporting and uh, their history and whatever is there into the uh, GRI, uh, GRI journey as far as the formulation of standard is concerned. I hope you must have enjoyed today's lecture of mine. Thank you so much.